Okay, well, welcome back. This is take two of this entry in the old school cassette collecting vlog. I am not Scott Smith, despite what other people will try to tell me. Welcome to the Illuminatrix channel, which as you may or may not have known, the 82 original subscribers know this. We started out for a long time putting up concert videos because I am also a lighting designer, emeritus. But, and that means I'm retired, but I'll come out of retirement every once in a while if I need to do so. Anyway, we did that for a long time, close to 10 years, and then as I've retired out of that, we started making some repair videos, and now we're talking about cassettes. And as you know, the one thing that we do on this channel is we do it all live, unscripted, in one take with no editing. You'll never see any herky-jerk motions. You'll never have to watch the clock jump around in the background. None of that happens. If I don't like the take, I do the whole thing over. And since I don't have a script, everyone's gonna be different anyway. But that's the way I do it. Now I do think about these things as I'm preparing to do these and I, and I get a good idea in my head of what I wanna talk about. And, I, and it takes me a while actually without writing a script to prepare. Anyway, this is take two of this particular one because I didn't like the way that it came out and I kind of rambled a little bit too much and it just didn't, wasn't coherent. Now what are we looking at first? First thing we're first thing, we're gonna zoom in here a little bit on this. I got this one two, three box pile for, well, I insisted on giving him $10. He only wanted five and I was like, well, thank you very much because usually I have to talk people down because they want 350 for these boxes. So it really worked out. Now I've been taking some things out and I've been, um, you know, this is all from that thing. Now look, I got, I got like a whole bunch of 80s country that I've been pulling out here. Um, and then look at all this. This is all like 50s stuff and 60s and 70s. Freedom Rock, man! I'm actually really excited about this. I'm, I'm really excited about this because we all have seen the commercial. We all know the commercial. If you lived in the 80s or 90s, you know those two stupid, hippie looking, dumbass commercial that sold this. Set, and I'm sure I'm gonna find the other tapes in here. Uh, awesome, and, 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 and it brings back memories. And so now, that's another thing that I'm gonna start looking at. We started talking about senior prom in a previous episode that was kind of the same thing. And now we're looking in here, here's the solid gold party pack, and right back to the 50s, and, and um, here's the 28 greatest hits, blah, blah, blah. Um, check this out. We're going to do a whole video on this. I got a couple other things here, but that's a preview. So now what we're kind of looking for, we're looking for collections now because uh, this is a collect, starting to become a collection. I have upwards of a thousand tapes now, I think. Uh, it's pretty close. We still have the mystery box that we got. Um, this is full of mostly blanks and Christmas. This is... Um, kind of a mystery bag. There's a few tapes in here and a layer down here of stuff that I just haven't gone through. Over there, you can see the old collections collection building up and the tool bench. And then that's a, another couple of racks. That box up there, these boxes all are full. Um, so yeah, so a little bit obsessed, but point is, is that now we're collecting things because we're going to start looking at collections and, and, and compilations. Now we talked about this before and let's go over here and we'll, we'll, we'll hook up and we'll talk about what, the one compilation set that we wanted to look at today. Anyway, what I promised you last time. Oh, think about these compilation sets. Why is that not working? Why is, there we go. Um, the thing about these compilation sets is before say Napster, say before, before 1999 approximately, the only way you were gonna get this, any kind of music was to go and get it off the radio or from a friend or to buy the album. You're not getting collections, you can't pick songs. Singles exist, but they're not the way that we think about it. And, and if you're trying to put together uh, your own mixtape or something like that, it was kind of hard. Or if you were trying to go for a genre, this is how, you know, in the 80s, if you're going back to the 50s or 60s, you're trying to get the doo-wops or trying to get the, the classicals or whatever. So 
you had that going on it was kind of hard and those compilations were actually kind of cool in a way then you had also the trusted curators uh, and I'm gonna think that eventually and I have come across some but I'm gonna eventually come across time life series of things I believe I have some classical stuff of theirs that's floating around but anyway uh, that's that's something I'm gonna be looking at and then of course this is this is new to me in this era. I don't remember these as a kid. This is this is my Reader's Digest collection. Here, let's turn the light on here. Uh, I think that makes it a little bit better, right? Yeah. Look at this, beautiful. Now, I, I, we talked about this in a previous episode. All of a sudden, I kind of noticed that there was these things were kind of the same, and there was a cool compilation on them. So. I kind of went through all my stuff and I was like, holy crap, I've got a lot of these. And they're all really cool and they sound really nice. And Reader's Digest, all right, it's not the best quality tapes, but they're, it's passable. But what they did is they curated and compiled moods, mood music. It, it uh, Well, all right, so like here's Soft and Sentimental and here's Moon Glow and Stardust Moods. And the best of Grand Funk, wait a minute. All right, I just gotta show you this. I, I put that in there, it's a ringer. Um, I don't know what's going on, but they just used the same font and yellow. This is actually a, a Capitol Records, a 1985 Capitol Records. So it's probably gonna be poor quality and sound like crap. I have never actually played this tape yet. But when I was going through, I was just looking for yellow stuff and <laughs> pull that out. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Anyway. Um, so, and then they also featured, here's, well, for example, here's the best favorites of Johann Strauss, and there's two tapes of that, and then, here, but, <laughs> Sons of the Pioneers, I showed this last time, and excuse me for being ignorant of who the Sons of the Pioneers actually were, um, the original cowboy, uh, country western, bluegrass, all-star band, rotating lineup, all, like, I should have known better. Excuse my ignorance and not knowing what I was talking about when I was looking at them. And then I found this one, and it's uh, it's not a, it's not the same but different. This is down the memory trail with the Sons of Pioneers. This says, oh, I forgot. That's scratched up there. This is tape tape three, I believe. The actual J card is scratched up too. Oh, it's a well. This is tape one, maybe. I don't know. I have to match it up. A lot of times, I'm finding that they're not necessarily match up. Tape three, side A. These are not the running tapes. This is Down the Memory Trail with the Sons of Pioneers, tape one. This is the case for Down the Memory Trail with Sons of Pioneers, tape three. It happens. And then, this is the Sons of the Pioneers' greatest hits. I'm not sure. Now, and I, this one's got this, it says, Reader's Digest Cassette. Pretty, I can't read anymore. I'm old. Reader's Digest Cassette. Pleasure Program Digital Remaster. And that's on a couple of these. Now these also don't have, over here, the Reader's Digest. I'm not sure what any of this means. I'm just pointing out the cool anomalies. Eventually I'll be bored and go on the internet and I will look up something and some bigger nerd than I am will have laid this all out. Uh, so these two over here that are that are, have this over here, it's an Eddie Arnold and it's the Statler Brothers. It's their kind of compilation album of contemporary people. I think they're, I've, I, <laughs> I don't know. Then you got the Strauss and these other ones. So there's just all here. Now then you get in here, easy listening hits of the 60s and 70s. Now I always end up with tape one and tape three, and never tape two. And I don't know if there's a tape four. I think I remember this one um, on the commercials. But let's see, is this tape one? Yes, this one's tape one. You light up my life, never gonna fall in love again. Oh my goodness. Now, I wonder if this is the actual artists or if this is... I haven't listened to these yet. Yeah, it looks like... 
These are by actual people. Oh, this is a BMG, uh, BMG, great. So that's how Reader's Digest went through. Well, I don't know, I like these compilations. Uh, I like them a lot. I'm still not sure if this is the right the theme. Love theme from Rolling Owen and Julia, it feels so good. Brian's song, it is tape three. Can't wait to listen to these. Here's another one that I really like, that I have tape one and tape three of. The Golden Age of Country Music. Ooh, I'm just gonna put this on. Uh, golden Age of Country Music. So, what this is, it's, it's a bunch of songs, obviously, but there's like a radio show. So the guy talks and introduces it and gives a little history, and then uh, he, um, then the song plays, and so it's like kind of a radio show. Uh, it's kind of neat. I, I, so they have different ways of going about this. I have here, actually, two unopened cassettes. Now, there's two things to show about this. All right, the first thing is, is they're unopened, and I don't take any particularly special stock in the fact that they're unopened. I don't find that they have any extra value necessarily. I don't think that they have a premium because they're sealed up or anything like that. I do, I will open them at some point or maybe I will sell them unopened, but in a batch of other tapes, just like any other tape. I also think at this point, there's no reason for me to open them because I have a lot of tapes that need to be gone through already. So I don't think I need to worry about opening these right now. So I will leave them on open for now. Now the second thing I wanna show is these are both Reader's Digest, but this one's gone into this white with the purple writing, and it went from white tapes. Oh, that's not the one I want. I gotta show you that later. <laughs> went from all the, 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 or the, 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 this cream color tapes, to now we're into clear tapes. And I've noticed that, I'm starting to notice that. Now this is copyright 1999, so this is crazy that it's that old, but, or that, <laughs> that's still 20, 20 years old now, but it's um, recent for cassettes. But when did they all kind of go from these other clear white or cream or other weird stuff, and they all kind of coalesced into this clear shell at some point? Probably, I'm trying to pinpoint it. I'm trying. I'm kind of watching it, engaging it, and it's sometime in the early 90s. And, and it seems like there seems to be like a coalescent of design that happened and then everybody went to the clear tapes. Uh, the Capitol that I've been railing on, uh, they also switched to, to clear at some point and the quality of their tapes improved, I think, a little bit. Or maybe they're just younger and not as old. I don't know. But I'm going to be watching that because I'm not sure exactly how that all went down. And uh, I actually am finding that the older tapes are the cooler tapes to look at because they use different colors and different designs and some they have stickers and some use uh, printing and actually I have, that, that's, that's probably what we're going to do next is I have a whole bunch of different colored cassettes from the old dimes to show you. Anyway, so like I said, when I found the Grand Funk because it was yellow, I found this thing because it was this yellow thing over here, but this turns out that this is... Kilbasa Polka. And this is the Great Polkas with the Jimmy Stir Orchestra. And it's Poland's favorite polka, Johnny's Obrek, Jack Black Polka. Uh, it doesn't have the beer barrel. Oh no. Well, anyway, polkas all sound the same to me. I still love them, but I can't tell them apart. And that's okay, because they're worth 20 minutes every once in a while. So I thought this was awesome. Now, here's the cool part about this. Now this doesn't belong with the Reader's Digest, so it'll go off on this other, other thing. And here's the cool thing about this. I got this on a road trip not too long ago, and that's fine. And it was cool, it was far away from here. It was, it was a nice, it was not one of these other bins. And then I came home a couple weeks later and I got, I found this at the thrift store. Whoa. 
the best of Jimmy Stir and his orchestra. Signed. Signed by Jimmy Stir. How's that? How do you like that? How do you like that synchronicity? Like, obviously, Jimmy Stir Orchestra is, well, I don't know, maybe that's the character that John Candy was based off of in Home Alone. I don't know. I didn't look him up. I did not look who Jimmy Stir is, but I did listen to the polkas, and they're fun. So that's pretty cool. Now, I have one bonus thing, because you've made it to the end here. I have to find it. Okay, here it is. Now, this is this is the this is this is your bonus for letting me ramble for 15 minutes. This is Loretta Lynn, Peace in the Valley. It is a nice Sunday afternoon, quasi-religious, but somewhat non-denominational, hymnal, confessional, blah blah blah. Sounds nice. She's got a beautiful voice and they're timeless gospel inspired tunes. Okay? Great. MCA Records. Let me just figure out what year this was. 1988. Okay. MCA Records. Yeah, you tell me. Can you read? No, you can't right now. Yeah, I'm going to focus. You can't read that shit either. Try that out. Right there. Yeah, go for it. I dare you. Yeah. Anyway. So I open it up. Clear tape, 1988. So there's a transition in there somewhere. I open it up, and, and, and I'm just, I just caught this on the edge of my eye. And I said, open it up. I said, okay. So we've talked about this where they sometimes put the catalog in here. It's fairly standard that would fit with this. The Mamas and the Papas, Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, Boxcar Willie, Waylon Jennings, Lee Greenwood, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, and then Rodney Dangerfield on top, which is weird. Uh, but here's the one that stuck out because it was right underneath the J cards. You could see it. It says, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby talks to kids about drugs. Introductions and downers and upper song. Questions and answers. Order in the classroom, I found a way out. People make mistakes, songs, I know I can handle it song. Captain Junkie songs, Bill and the Kids Sing, and closing. MCA C-20436, I cannot. I don't know the irony of that, of finding that now in the, in the churchy tape. Like, if they only knew. If they only knew. Absolutely incredible. Anyway, I thought that was a good chuckle. Um, we're in an absurd world, so let's celebrate the mundane. Till next time, try not to run out of toilet paper. And keep your stick on the ice.